Our first guest is Mark Mosher, who is a principal with BMW, a successful lobbying and campaign management firm in San Francisco. Mark also served uh, for several years as the executive director on the Committee on Jobs and has been here before, and thank you for coming back. Thanks, Ike. We uh, noted with interest an article, a guest column written <laughs> by Chris Daly about your firm. You did read it. Yeah, I read it. Okay, and I, I thought it's a, it's a good platform to discuss the, the, uh, the use of I independent expenditures, uh, what we're seeing uh, as paradigms for campaigns right now, sure. independent expenditures versus the small donors with a web-based campaign. Now, in your initial reaction to Chris Daly, he had a reason for obviously writing the article. You uh, went after him or were hired to go after mm -hmm. him. What did you think of some of his uh, editorial evaluations of your firm? <laughs> um, I would love to hire him as our marketing director. You think uh, he helped your firm? <laughs> well, it's he credits us with uh, uh, helping to elect the last mayor, helping to elect an assemblyman, um, and a number of other accomplishments, which you know I don't think are ours exclusively. Not so, exclusively. Uh, so, but you're being but modest. Well, I, I mean, you, you did raise around three million dollars for Willie Brown, didn't you? Um, probably about a million and a half. And that again is through this. Um, strange creature called an independent expenditure. Sure. Let me read as he quoted from your web page. Government rules place limits on the amount of money individuals can contribute directly to candidate campaigns. Independent expenditure campaigns offer another option for getting your message out. Your firm is one of the premier Bay Area firms when it comes to managing these highly specialized, highly regulated campaigns. What I'm curious about is if if this was the intent of the city election code to create small donors, smaller donors, so no one really mm -hmm. controls the race, how did they allow and how are you able to use what appears to be a loophole in their intention to keep donations small, regulated, and identified? It's simple. Uh, all of the independent expenditures we have, at least my firm has worked on since this law passed after the year 2000, are independent expenditures that are collected in $500 chunks. So in other words, you may wind up spending a larger overall amount, you know, uh, 50000 or $100,000, but it's raised all in small contributions just as if those contributions had been given in $500 chunks directly to the candidate. So why would they give to an independent expenditure committee and not directly to the candidate? Uh, in some cases, there are people who have already given to the candidate, him or herself, or they've um, so they're, if they gave a $500, mm -hmm. are they still allowed to give $500 to the independent expenditure Yeah, committee? I mean, for instance, in San Francisco, let's say you've got a number of people running for a district election seat. Mm -hmm. You could give money to multiple candidates in that race up to a maximum of $3,000. You could give six $500 contributions in one race. So it makes no difference whether you give it to an independent expenditure or directly to a candidate. But is there still a limit the in the thing. end? There's a yeah. limit in the end? Yeah, there's a limit. Okay, and do the uh, do the people who give the independent expenditures have to be listed and st as yeah. I, you have yeah. to state all that? Yes. So people have to be disclosed the same way that they would if they gave to a campaign directly and they're limited in exactly the same way as if they gave to the campaign directly. A lot of people think that those limits are unconstitutional. They've been struck down in San Jose. They've been struck down in Oakland. They probably will be struck down in San Francisco at some point. That said, I completely agree with the public's right to know who is contributing to and against candidates. And they should know it probably in real time. And so everyone that contributes to an independent expenditure mm -hmm. that you sponsor has to be listed and provided to the elections committee. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're a vendor. We work for organizations. We work for restaurants. We work for small businesses. We work for employers. We've worked for labor unions. We've worked for environmental groups. And, and your list is impressive. I put a link uh, to the article, but I will have a link to your mm -hmm. website to see the many uh, clients you have, uh, which uh, brings up the other point that Mr. Daly brought up, which mm -hmm. is you're able to elect candidates, but then again, you also are a lobbying firm, which means you are you are lobbying those very mm -hmm. elected officials that uh, you may have elected. Yeah. Do you see a conflict of interest? Well, the article's inaccurate in that sense in that my firm has never been registered nor will it ever be registered to lobby in Sacramento. So we don't 
How about in San Francisco? In San Francisco, we don't run uh, candidate campaigns, and John Whitehurst, who's the primary campaign manager in our firm, doesn't lobby. But Sam your independent Louder, expenditures did influence candidates like Willie Brown and Gavin Newsom. I don't. Do, did really you raise eight hundred thousand dollars for Gavin Newsom? Uh, yeah, but show me how that's influenced Gavin Newsom's behavior. I don't think. What I has. meant is, do you do you do you have contact with these officials? Do, do you have contact with Gavin Newsom on various issues that are of importance to your clients? Sure, but I would make the case that. Gavin Newsom is not going to change his mind on an issue. Well, that, that's Gavin of Newsom, of, us of course. Yeah, he doesn't seem to be influenced by anything but his mm -hmm. own opinion. But he might be influenced by someone who's raising money for him, don't you think? Uh, in my experience, no. But you could see how the public or Mr. I Daly would think that. Well, I could see how there's the appearance of it. I, I, look, Isn't that why they regulated these independent expenditures? Yeah. I mean, I have a lot of respect for Chris's you know, fervent belief in a particular uh, type of economics. I happen to completely and utterly disagree with it. Don't you think that's what Chris this fight's Daly about. in reality is probably the only deal maker in San Francisco? Um, I don't know that he's the only deal maker. I would say I, other members of the board have said that Chris is one of the most pro-development supervisors, and exactly. if you look at his district, that's probably but he, true. In other words, when you look at the various supervisors like McGoldrick and, and mm -hmm. Maxwell, even the mayor, you find that the only name that seems to come up when a deal is struck on really challenging projects, it's Chris Daly. Now, uh, mm. I'm wondering when you went after him and you did spend, how much did you spend in trying to defeat him? I wouldn't focus this around us. We were a, a big okay. player in this. But it, but it brings up another issue, which is that you have participated in certain district elections one way or another. You have, you have raised money one way or another for candidates. And yet, you, while your record is extraordinary in ballot measures, candidates, mm -hmm. and if they go to the website, you'll see how your firm has been so mm -hmm. successful and win, won many awards for your candidate-based and, and ballot-based campaigns, you haven't been able to crack that district elections wall. Why is that? Um, well, Why doesn't money seem to be able to produce? A, it's a very small number of voters. I mean, I worked on um, Bevan Dufty's uh, first race, and the independent expenditures did almost no traditional media. They did no television ads, no mail, really no media of any kind. It was all field. And uh, working on that race, which was successful, um, these campaigns involve people winning by as few as five or six or seven thousand votes. That was the purpose of district elections, yeah. It, it, that's the purpose of district elections. It's to make various forms of mass media uneconomic. In other words, yes. it, 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 it is very hard to go out and print runs of seven thousand and eight thousand and ten thousand things. But you 10, did. Things. But in, in We've in done it. The but race against Daly, uh, you were supporting, or well, I'll use the word support, you, mm -hmm. have raised, you had raised money and ran, ran some campaigns against for Mr. Black. Yeah, I mean, what my firm did was primarily in favor of Rob Black more than it was against Chris. And you Daly. spent some money on it. Yeah, and he went from uh, about seven percent name ID to uh, you know getting about seven thousand votes in the race. But, but not victorious. No. Mm -mm. Do you think then that in in those kinds of races, district elections, uh, your style of campaigning, like you implied. Uh, Although you do a grassroots operation, sure. I, it, it, each campaign's yeah. different. I mean, the 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 premise that campaigning's going to have to change mm -hmm. is is right. I mean, there are going to be more and more regulations on the way political money is raised and spent. Some of those regulations make a lot of sense. Others really shackle free speech. Over the long term. Uh, you're going to see a shift to more and more campaigning via the internet. You're going to see a, can uh, a shift to more and more um, grassroots styles of campaigning because that's what's happening right. in media the, in but general. The left, it's interesting, the left has used both those mm -hmm. styles. George Soros will sponsor oh, these sure. huge independent expenditure committees, right. whereas organizations, front organizations like MoveOn.org, mm -hmm. will e emphasize a $25, $35 donation made on the web by credit card. Do you do those kinds of campaigns, and would those work in San Francisco? Yeah, um, I mean, and why hasn't the left here discovered that kind of campaigning? Well, even that type of infrastructure, you know, raising money via twenty-five dollar contributions on the internet, does take expertise, does take money to set up the infrastructure to do it. It takes infrastructure to set up 
you know, I'm not sure the economics work for that any better than they do for trying to send out little mailers in districts. Whereas you see, um, you know, Bob Brigham is a friend of mine. Bob was one of the people who helped organize the campaign to raise money for Paul Hackett in the uh, race in Ohio, where you know the bloggers landed on this district. They raised something, I guess, around uh, one hundred fifty thousand dollars in a short period of time. Uh, I know I'm going to get killed on the internet because I've got the details wrong, and they're all going to, you know, be all over the chat boards telling me I don't know what I'm talking about. But these guys. Uh, um, raised a lot of money through a grassroots effort and then they attacked the Democratic Party for writing off the district as unwinnable and yet you saw how close right. his candidacy came. But even that type of infrastructure takes a well, lot. Well, we had a consultant on who, who did say it cost from fifty to hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars just to do the software, but yeah. I guess it probably works in larger races. Let's talk a little about San Francisco. You were uh, a key player uh, as executive director for the Committee on Jobs. The mayor's race it is almost impossible, mathematically impossible, for Gavin Newsom to lose mm -hmm. with ranked choice voting, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, an ironic uh, situation is that, you know, the, the left really pushed instant runoff voting, and while I've been critical of how it works, I mean, it's, it's incumbent protection. It'll, it makes even it... Even at the district level. Oh, even at the district level. I mean, it makes it very hard to unseat a district supervisor. It makes it very hard to unseat a sitting mayor and particularly in some more moderate to conservative districts. I mean, San Francisco just elected a former Republican on the west side of town, a Jew, largely right. because, of, uh, because of instant runoff voting. A couple minutes left. Um, much has been, even though I agree, based on uh, the mayor's triangulation, successful triangulation, the left and the right, uh, you have, your firm is, is the firm that's done these all famous polls on Gavin Newsom, about 80% rating. Uh, you say that you still see that kind of popularity. I, is that true, even a recent poll? Yeah, I mean, d d as of, we do tracking polls for a variety of different clients. They're not to elect or unelect anybody. Are they anybody. push polls? No, absolutely not. Do they ask, would you vote for uh, Gavin Newsom for re-election? Mm -hmm. I understand the Chamber of Commerce issued a poll that was on their website and showed only 61% answer that question positively. And David Binder was on this yeah. program, and he said half of that 80% is soft. Mm -hmm. Would you agree with that? Didn't uh, he do the poll for you? The poll that we did is two months old. We asked about his approval rating. Every time we've asked about his <laughs> approval rating, it's been in the 70s. Mm -hmm. And but isn't the, don't they ask the question, very good, good, fair, and poor? Don't they break it down to four categories yeah. so that the, the, the respondee has a way to qualify their answer? Here's how I'd answer the question. <laughs> Here's how I'd answer the question. How people are going to vote on your re-election is completely a function of who you're running against. Ask Arnold Schwarzenegger. Absolutely. No, I agree. I have said already that uh, no, he can win with only 51 percent. And I think That's what right. will be key is the first poll that comes out once the campaign begins. It's, now, do I, uh, I We're would, running out of time. I agree with Eric Jay's assessment that with public financing of campaigns, the notion that the government will give you half a million dollars to run your campaign, Which somebody, gonna some, somebody's going to take Absolutely. a shot. Absolutely. Mark Mosher, thanks for being with us. Thanks, Arthur. Stay with us. We'll be right back.